sense. Okay, so changes. <laughs> what changes could we make? So three. Let's just pick three because I know there are a host. Did you, you look at, like you said, every aspect of your life. You could change every one of them for the better, I'm sure, the average person. So, and including me. I got lots of changes I can make too and everybody. So what, what are three major changes that would be the most impactful for ourselves but really for the, the next generation so that they grow up also maybe not having to change those things and they also get the benefit of whatever improvement it can do to their genetics ahead of time. You're asking me the hardest question. <laughs> so let me pick three, and because throughout your course I know that um, I'll leave out one that I think would be really important, which is this assessing our birth and deciding, so I'm talking about it anyway, but yeah, assessing okay. our birth yeah, trauma yeah. and dealing with these things. Let's assume that we, we're doing that. Okay. Three things that you can do right now. Um, you can really begin to examine the foods that you put in your mouth, and you can go on this really fun journey that takes you from wherever you're at towards better food. Even if you think you're at the best food, I can tell you there's further you can go. Because the best food in the world is actually wild foods. That's what we're genetically adapted to. We've only been farming for 10,000 years. Mm -hmm. And most of us have only been farming a couple thousand, domesticating species, changing them. Prior to that, for 200,000 years of evolution, everything we ate came from wild ecosystems. That's the best food. That's why that food's available when you go to the highest end restaurants. That's why they send foragers out to bring fiddleheads and morels back. Because black trumpets and things like that. That's the best food. That's the most nutritious food. Now, a lot of us, that's a long ways out. Mm -hmm. That's maybe not accessible for us. Right? And maybe we're on the full you know, Dorito chip diet now. So what do we do? We move towards organic food. If we're getting that and we lock that in and we get our diet to a place where we're eating primarily organically raised food, there's another level. Because organic doesn't mean as much as it used to. Yeah. And it might mean all your food shipped in from somewhere far away from where you live. Um, and it's also very expensive. So where do we go from there? We move from that organic food over to our local food. We start to connect with our local farmers at our farmers markets or through co-ops or through CSAs, consumer supported agriculture programs. And we find local producers of foods and we get local, organic, and now we add in this piece, heirloom, genetics yeah. of the food we eat. If we lock that in, maybe we want to move towards growing some of our own food or rearing some of our own animals. I think even beyond that would be getting into your own hunting and fishing and wild foraging and combining that with some horticulture, some gardening, until you've got a diet where not only are you in control of what the soil environment's like or what the, what the uh, things that you're growing are eating, whether animal or plant, but actually what genetic strains are you eating. Because there's this interesting question that I think I like to pose to people of, do the genetics of what you eat matter as much as vitamins, minerals, carbohydrates? Do genetics matter? Most people don't think so until you offer them genetically modified food, right. which they don't want to eat because of its DNA. Well, if DNA matters in food, I think the heirloom varieties and the wild varieties are so much better than these commercially developed varieties. So first thing you can do, wherever you're at, Know that there's this spectrum from the worst food possible to the best food possible and always be just making movements towards that. And when you get confused about what to do, when new information comes, oh, don't eat this, it's bad for you. And then you hear somebody else say, no, no, it's good for you. And you're weighing it back and forth. What should I choose? Should I be a vegetarian? Should I eat animal foods? Should I you know, do carbohydrates or fats? Whenever you get confused, look at the diets of indigenous people and traditional cultures and model off of it. That's the last time and space and place where we knew what worked. New stuff, not going to work. If you want to know more about that, I'd look at the Weston Price Foundation. Take a look at the book, Nutrition and Physical Degeneration. It'll give you a nice broad picture of what natural diets look like. Second thing you can do, change the water you're drinking. I think this is so important. I joke with people a lot about how we're a 70% we're a say water-based organism. We're like a fish tank. And our cells are like the fish. And if you think about a fish tank, if anyone's ever had one, you know, what's more important, the quality of the fish flake or the quality of the water? Mm. It's pretty obvious to most of us. You could have the highest end, the very best fish flake available, fully organic, right? Freeze dry, perfect, the best stuff. And if you've got crappy water, the fish will be sick. If you had the best water imaginable, we go to Siberia to Lake Bacal and we take that amazing spring fed lake water, we rear the fish in there, we could probably get away with a lower quality fish flake and the fish would stay healthy. 
That's just, mm -hmm. in, that's obvious. It's intuitive. Mm -hmm. Water is a lot more important, quality of water, I think, than even food. Now, I've created a website, findaspring.com, and that's a website people can go to to locate springs where they live, and you can actually drive your car up to the spring and get out with your bottle and get clean, fresh water from the mm -hmm. earth and bring it home and drink it. If you got a five-gallon bottle of water, I mean, let's say you're about, say, five gallons, you drink <laughs> that whole bottle and change out all the old water in your body for clean water, you actually get to build your body, 70% of it, out of the cleanest water in the world. And the reason I love spring water is because it comes from aquifers that are deep underground and they haven't been contaminated by pollution and industry because the water's been under there since before any of that began. Sometimes thousands and thousands of years. Now if you don't have access to a spring where that feels like, whoa, that's a little far out, I'm not going there yet. Um, you could go to visit a friend who has an artesian well or maybe you have an artesian well where you can get water from underground. Um, that's critical. Real water from ecosystems I think is important. Um, if you don't have access to that and you're drinking tap liquid currently, uni <laughs> water, <laughs> um, now's the time to invest in high quality filtration system and learn how to condition that water so that after it comes out of the filter you restore it a bit because filters do damage water, we know it. The World Health Organization tells us that filtered waters from reverse osmosis, distillation, desalination, and deionization all create waters that are very demineralizing to the body. We know that mm -hmm. now. So if you are using that kind of water, maybe a little pinch of salt to a five gallon bottle, shake that up, let some minerals get back in there, let some activity happen to the hydrogen bond matrix of the water. Water quality matters. Just like with wild food, we said you've got your sort of um, your Doritos on this end, you've got your wild food on this end, move in this direction, however long that takes you, comfortably at a sustainable pace, this is your muni water laden with pee and toilet paper and tampons. That's true. Those are the major contaminants in city water um, because people's toilet water is recycled as drinking water. Uh, pharmaceuticals that were in that person's body show up in their birth control, another vector by which we're seeing effects on our reproduction. Um, all these things, countless um, contaminants, fluoride, chlorine, all of this stuff, if that's what's in your diet, in your water, and you've got spring water on this end, start the movement, the progression towards clean water. Right. The last thing I want to say is get off of science diet. Genetically modified food, pesticide sprayed food, uh, synthetically fertilized food. Get off of pharmaceuticals. These artificially uh, synthesized and or extracted plant molecules that have been taken out of their whole matrix. Most of the pharmaceuticals are originally derived from plants, but everything else that was in there with that molecule has been taken away to we're left with a, a pure white powder. These things have serious side effects. We don't know the long-term effects of taking them. Your doctor doesn't know the effects of the pharmaceuticals he issues you. He can't. He doesn't know, and he doesn't know how they'll interact with everything else you're doing. This is why so many people are sick from their pharmaceuticals. This is why doctors are killing more people than nearly anything else. Um, get off of pharmaceuticals, get off of injections, get off of vaccines, get off of all this stuff. Learn to use food and vitalism and herbalism and or other alternative methods and modes to correct things in your body. Know that your doctor doesn't know how to cure anything. They've never cured anything. They've never cured any disease. There's no disease they've cured. They haven't cured colds or flus. They haven't cured all those things with vaccines they claim to. We now know that most of those diseases are not in our culture now because of sanitary toilet conditions. It's not vaccine. They haven't cured anything. All they do is drug people, cut people, burn people, and irradiate people. Those are their four methods, and they don't work. And they lead to more problems. So shun your doctor. Get on good quality food and good quality water and you'll be amazed at the changes that happen in your body over time.